Hello and welcome back to our blog. I am Jim Cuervo, your senior instructor and tech support here at Digital Drafting Systems. Today we will be looking at one of three chapters of our blog dealing with massing in Revit. Our first blog will be on shapes in Revit massing. What can you do with it when it comes down to extrusions? Sounds exciting? Then let's get going, shall we? Now, the very first thing that we need to do is to go over to the Massing and Sight tab, go the, to the Conceptual Mass panel, and look for Show Mass. Underneath that, in the flyout, you will see Show Mass Form and Floors. You need to invoke this in order to be able to see your massing. So let's go ahead and do that. Following that, you need to create a mass in place command, which is actually found right next to the to the show mass form and floors right here. And we shall go ahead and invoke in place mass, which asks us to go ahead and name this very first mass. So let's go ahead and call this one demo of shapes. And let's go ahead and say OK to that. Once this is done, we obviously then see that we have our drawing tools up, our dimension tools up, our components, and our work planes. Let's go ahead and leave it here in this particular level one plane, and let's go ahead and draw a box. It doesn't really matter what size the box is because we're going to learn what we can do with it. So let's go ahead and do rectangle tool and draw our rectangle. It doesn't matter what the size is. We just go ahead and click. Once that's done, we can then go over here to modify so we can find out what you can do with this particular rectangle. And in order to find out what you can do with this rectangle, let's go ahead and select it by keeping ourselves in the modify uh, tool and selecting the rectangle. As you can see, you would expect individual solid dots to appear at the corners. But what you do find is what is called a ring at that corner. What this indicates is that this particular line here, or this, this face as it's called, which is made up of two vertices, okay, are actually having those vertices that it, that it has to start and end, or start and end, whichever way it is, being coincidental with the adjoining line segment. So if these two points are coincidental, rather than giving you a solid line, or solid dot, excuse me, which is a grip, it gives you a little ring. If you come over with your cursor and select the ring itself, and you move the ring, what you're doing is you're moving both vertices simultaneously, changing your shape. Okay. Further, if you wanted just to modify just one segment of the rectangle, what you do is you select it again until you get the solid dots. Once you have those solid dots, what you have now is the ability to modify not the adjoining uh, points or the adjoining line segments because of the coincidental vertices, but just the line segment that is in highlighted blue which is going to be using the uh, grip modification by move, moving the particular grip point anywhere I want. Okay, so that is what happens here. If I actually move it at the bottom, what we do find is that we have now created two shapes. One is a single line, and the other one is three lines. Now that we have the three lines designed like this, why don't we switch over to a perspective or isometric view and let's see what happens when we actually try to extrude go ahead and select this piece right here and say extrude solid form as you can see what happens is you have an open shape an open-ended shape i can actually extrude this one also but this is now as you can see they're all basically what you would call in autocad 3d faces Let's undo for a second. And let's go ahead and reconnect these points and let's see what happens then. 
Let's go ahead and reselect the shape and create a solid. At this point, what you can see is it looks solid. As a matter of fact, by selecting the faces, I can definitely tell you that these are faces. Okay? So remember, in order to create a solid, your shape must be closed. In other words, no open ends. Okay? So now we know that in order to create a solid object, your line shapes must be closed line shapes, just like in AutoCAD. You know, when you extrude in AutoCAD and you have an open polyline, what you get is 3D faces. But if the polyline is closed, then you get a solid. The same uh, principle applies here. Moving on, let's say, for example, let's go ahead and undo for now. And let's say that we wanted to change these two lines into a spline. So we can select this like this, okay? Invoking both lines, as you can tell, both lines are highlighted in blue, meaning they're selected, and hit the delete key. Once you do that, I would highly advise not to use the spline through points as much as you would the spline here. Using the endpoints to make sure that your shape is closed once again okay and once that's done you can then go to modify and continue to go ahead and edit your shape by doubling a, doing a double click on the particular spline you can still modify the positions of the controlling vertices you can still go ahead and control these vertices that are coincidental in this form. Notice what happens when you actually have the spline connected into two lines. The spline itself will only allow you to manipulate the adjoining to the regular lines, the adjoining vertices to the regular lines. You cannot really modify the actual spline itself. In order to modify the spline, you need to double click on the spline, and then you are able to modify these uh, coincidental vertices. And basically, as we know, it's coincidental to the union of this arc with this arc at the tangency. Okay? So, with that, we have achieved the very first chapter of our massings in Revit which is shapes and what you can do with it. I lead you to explore, and I highly advise you to actually play with it as much as you can to actually see some of the things that you can do with this. With this, I am Jim Cuervo for Digital Drafting Systems, wishing you a good day. Till the next one in Chapter 2 of this Series of 3, I wish you a happy and safe day. Stay healthy. Till the next one. Thank you very much.